it's certainly hard to measure green jobs, so the notion of what a green job is is not something that you can pre precisely identify. My problem with green jobs is I think it's, it's somewhat of a dubious motivation for environmental policy. Uh, certainly, if a government project were to subsidize some sort of clean technology, or clean fuel, <coughs> you're going to draw jobs to that sector and thus create a green job. But from a kind of a net benefit to the economy, you have to ask where's that job's coming from. And in fact, if it's displacing a private sector job, that's actually a cost to the economy. Here's somebody who's working in the private sector doing something productive, and now he or she has been shifted away from that. And so the way you would look at it, you say, okay, is the benefit to the environment that we're getting from this green job, how does that compare to the cost we have of what this person would have been doing otherwise? And so to kind of talk about green jobs, absent the fact that this is uh, uh, diverting resources from the private sector, I think kind of distorts environmental policy. And, and you know, environmental policy is not really meant to be job creating policy. It's meant to be uh, policies directed at addressing our environmental problems and reducing pollution. Uh, there can be a case, you know, in a, uh, you can make a case during a time of recession when there's a great deal of unemployment that you're not going to be diverting jobs from the private sector. And, and, the, and the, the broader stimulus argument, that is the, the broader uh, argument behind stimulus, which is you spend government money to get people who are not working, you're not diverting them from the private sector, and now you get them into a job. But if that's your goal, the goal shouldn't be green jobs. It's not the most effective form of stimulus um, by any means. So I, I find it, it's very politically appealing. It's something that gets some traction. Uh, people don't like to hear that environmental policies tend to, to, cost, to cost us resources, but I think it's just an unavoidable fact. So to my mind, we shouldn't spend too much time focusing on green jobs when talking and, de and designing environmental policies. By and large, I don't think the, the government is very good at, at venture capitalism. Uh, that's not really the role for government. And unfortunately, I think it's where our environmental policies have kind of led us to. Uh, I think hands down, if the goal of environmental policy is to reduce pollution, which I think that is the goal, then the way to do that is to raise the price of pollution. You set a tax, it raises the price of, of pollution or pollu polluting activities. And that sends a broad signal to the market that, A, we should conserve more, and so consumers know to conserve because now they're being sent this price signal and they want to save money, and B, it sends a signal to alternative fuels, alternative technologies, things that we may not have even thought of, innovators, hey, there's a market out there now, go out and innovate. And we're not in the business of picking which technology should be replacing this dirtier fuel and dirtier technology. That is kind of the quintessential case for the market. It's an infinitely complex question, and the kind of dynamics of a competitive market is best equipped to address that. There is a role for government to set that price, to set that tax, and to then let the market forces respond. Unfortunately, the taxes are politically unpopular, and so what we wind up with is a system of subsidies, which we should note still costs us taxes. We still have to finance these subsidies. Uh, in addition to that, then we also have to pick which, which uh, technologies are going are to receive this tech, these, these subsidies. And the government is not as well designed for that. There's obviously political influences that are going to play a part in those decisions. And you wind up, in, in some sense, with a, with a form of corporate welfare, as opposed to uh, my preferred policy, where you price the pollution and then you, you step aside and you let the private market respond, trying to identify the low-cost alternatives. Well, in an election year, I don't, I don't see much happening on, on energy policy. I think we're in great need of comprehensive energy policy, but I think first we need to kind of sort out what our priorities are. We tend to have uh, multiple priorities or multiple goals, and they frequently tend to conflict. So we want to support domestic production of energy. So we want to raise revenue, and we want to protect the environment. And if you try and meet all those through, one, through various energy policies, they tend to conflict. So we subsidize oil and gas at the same time that we tax gasoline through the gas guzzler tax because we need revenue. We subsidize oil and gas at the same time that we subsidize alternatives to oil and gas. So you wind up essentially with micromanaging and, and mismicromanaging, if that's a word, uh, where you have a, a whole slew of, of, of tax credits and tax expenditures and subsidies out there working at competing ends. So my preferred approach is to strip it down. We both need to add things and subtract things. We need to have less of a focus on targeted subsidies and on the environmental realm, less of a focus on, kind of on mandating technologies and fuels. But we need to add something else, which is adding price signals, things that incorporate the 
cost to the environment that uh, our energy use imposes on us right now, and, and we need to then rely on the market to respond to those. So uh, I don't see this happening anytime soon. I think there's so many competing ends, both in the current policies that are there and in the current interests that surround those policies. You can see in our targeted subsidies, uh, almost every administration kind of has a pet uh, clean uh, or alternative energy project. So you had synthetic fuels under the Carter administration, you had alternative fuel vehicles under the Clinton administration, you had President Bush on hydrogen, we had clean coal, you have all these projects. Uh, which involve taxpayer money and which each administration more or less uh, we get a new one and they don't really lead to anything. I think uh, the policy we have, uh, we have right now are in, uh, uh, in large part a function of our reluctance to adopt what I think are more effective yet politically unpopular policies. Uh, rather than s setting a tax on pollution, not only do we subsidize alternatives, we also then go about mandating certain technologies, whether or not it's a certain type of light bulb or a certain type of uh, a dishwasher. Uh, these are second best by a long shot. I don't think they get you the same amount of environmental uh, uh, protection and they cost more. Now they have the advantage from a political point of view that they're a little more hidden. If you're being forced to buy an energy efficient uh, appliance, you're less likely to know what you're missing. Uh, you're, those, the price might be higher because it's more energy efficient. But that is less salient than if the government comes down and puts a tax, and you can see that there's a tax in every time you use anything that uses a certain amount of fossil fuels. So I think it, it has political appeal, but I don't think it's, a, it's as efficient. There's a number of reasons why it's not as effective either. Uh, if, I, uh, if I were to set a fuel economy standard or a fuel efficiency standard, it's going to raise the price of those new of those new appliances, it's going to give an incentive to people to hang on to their old ones a little longer, and older tends to be dirtier or less efficient. Uh, if you mandate that my dishwasher be more uh, energy efficient, I'm going to respond a little bit by using it a little bit more, because now it's cheaper to use, so some of the environmental savings, savings are absorbed that way. So you know, all this is to say these are just less effective ways of trying to get uh, the most bang for the buck, and the most bang for the buck is if you raise the, the price of fossil fuels. If you s establish something like a carbon tax, that sends a, a, a uniform uh, a market signal out there that people can respond to more efficiently and more effectively, and you get the pollution reduction that we seek.